Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, I wanted to share with you today, Pastor Frank gives me once a month, like I always say. Um, and uh, what I want to share today is, you know, I, I think, I, I, I know that I think a little different than probably most of you. And I uh, have an odd, you know, sometimes thought process. And I think of things that I want to talk about. And, and so we came up with, uh, with this message. And, you know, I, one of the things I struggle with, one of the questions I ask myself is, you know, if God is so perfect and so all-knowing and so great, you know, why did he create the heavens and the earth and people if he knew we were just going to mess it up? You know, there's a question I had to myself, you know, when, when God created the heavens and the earth, we see in Scripture in Genesis chapter 1, it tells us that he said everything was, it was perfect. He, his intention was that everything all was perfect. Seven times we can see in Genesis 1 that where we see that God observes that it was very good. It was good, you know. And, and everything obviously went wrong after Adam and Eve decided to disobedient, be disobedient to the Lord. And uh, now, because of that disobedience, we're living in a far from perfect world. Amen? And in this world, we obviously know that it's destined uh, for destruction. And, you know, so uh, now, you know, thinking about God, knowing that he's omniscient, knowing that he, he is all-knowing and, and all-seeing, and, and he knows everything that will happen in the past, the present, and even in the future. And, you know, so this means that he surely would have known, he surely would have known that Adam and Eve were going to decide to, at some point, they were going to decide to be disobedient. Now, Scripture doesn't tell us how long they were in the garden before that disobedience happened. But in any case, obviously, I think God would have known that. I mean, he, he would have known that sin would, would condemn not just those two people that actually did the sin, but the entire rest of the, his creation, the world and everything in it, and even uh, the people that walked the earth. Uh, every generation would suffer from that particular one thing. And here's what Preston thinks. You know, to me, it's like, you know, ever go to Control-Alt-Delete on your computer and just delete? Well, why didn't the Lord do that? You know, why didn't he just delete everything? He didn't really think about it. It only took him six days to create everything. You know, he could have just started over. I mean, he is the all-perfect, all-knowing God, right? Why didn't he just start over? Why did God create a world if he knew he knew it was going to go wrong eventually. This is, this is what I was thinking about. And, and, and the Bible doesn't is explicitly say, you know, why God decided to continue um, um, uh, putting up with such a flawed human race and knowing that uh, corruption, uh, his creation would be corrupt. Why would he create it, you know, even though he knew it was going to go wrong? And so let me just say this before we continue. <laughs> there, there, there's no possible way. There's no possible way for our, for especially my little mind and, and all of our, all of yours, to, to fully understand why God created humans. You know, there's really no possible way for us to, to understand that. And maybe that's a, a question you could, you know, probably ask when you get there. And, you know, I think once we have all these questions now that we want to ask the Lord, but when we get there, we're just going to fall down and worship. Amen? I mean, do you have questions that you would like to ask the Lord? I know I do. So this is this. So I, I, three options that I came up with of why God uh, decided to do this, and they're a little different. But um, the first thing is, you know, God created, God made creation perfect, right? So, but but somehow it went wrong, and and He had to send His Son to to do a rescue job. Maybe that's the case. Maybe that's why God did it. You know, but it, I kind of think on the surface this might be. You know, and this might work a little bit because we do see in Genesis 1, uh, it, it, we see that God created, but it doesn't really say, it doesn't tell us that God anticipated that he was going to have any problems. You know, it didn't he didn't anticipate that. And, and, you know, I can imagine him, you know, creating everything and saying it was all good, and then, you know, just a few days later, he's nodding his head at the disobedience of his uh, Adam and Eve and how they, they just wrecked it for all of us. Um, but... I think we need to keep the assumption, and just, let's just make sure we understand this, that God is sovereign, right? 
And God is sovereign. He's all, he's all powerful. He's all knowing. Um, and, and obviously, this is probably not what happened. What, what, what my, uh, my first opinion is, my first option is. You know, if, if, if that was the case, if, if God lost control, then everything that we believed in would be worthless, right? I mean, God's in control, amen? Yeah, God is in control. So everything we would believe in if he lost control would, would come apart. Second thing, second question is, is you know, option, is, is the reason God did that is God made creation um, so that when, when this, so that it would happen so, when it, so that sin would happen. He created so that sin would happen, so then he could send his son uh, to the earth to show his glory. Now, if you look at Psalms 19, this, kind of, this might fit into creation a little bit. It says in Psalms 19, the heavens are telling the, of the glory of God, and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. God is worthy to be glorified, I know that. But, you know, this would suggest that God's like a director of a movie and uh, a, a dramatic movie. And, and God somehow um, arranged it all so that man would sin and he would send his son down to, to show his love and mercy. I mean, except if you were to say this, um, this would be uh, equal to saying that God created sin. And, and we know that God did not create sin, right? Man made every. Uh, God made everything good, and man uh, messed it up. Um, um, and, and, you know, the reason that, that, that God, I believe, needed to do that is so he could uh, show his mercy and grace. You know, if, if that was the case for God, wouldn't you think that would make him a little manipulative? If he was, if he was to act that way, it would... Uh, the Bible tells us that uh, God makes it clear, the, the Word of God makes it clear that God is good. Look what it says in Psalms. I didn't put it on the screen, but Psalms 107, verse 1, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy is everlasting. You know, um, so obviously that statement that uh, God created such that this would happen, that He could send His Son to just to show His glory, that's, I don't believe, is true. Um, the third option that I had, you know, kind of makes a little more sense to me. God made creation knowing, knowing that it was going to mess it up, but he, but he did it anyway. But he did it anyway. You know, he, 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 uh, he, he loved us so much. I mean, th- this, 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 this makes the most sense because it keeps the assumption that God is perfect and good. It keeps that assumption. And, and, and you know, it's, it's like having good parents. I don't know, maybe you had good parents and, and they, they raised their child perfectly only to find out that the child turned out to be a rebel. You know, I know there's probably parents that think that they did everything perfect and then, you know, just what happened? But of course, this option, it, it would lead back to the original question. You know, since, since God knew that everything would turn against him, why did he bother creating? I mean, and I think we could probably discuss this all day long and, and probably come up with uh, a, a bunch of different conclusions that we, most of us would probably uh, not be, uh, you know, we, we would probably not disagree on, but we would figure it out, right? Um, but these are perspectives that, that helped me with the question because I know that God is, uh, shows his glory and he shows his love and he shows his mercy, doesn't he? Have you seen, experienced God's glory? Have you experienced his mercy? I hope you have. I hope you have. Um, here, it's funny that you know because God didn't fall, didn't cre- didn't make man fall. He didn't make the fall of man happen. And like I said, that would suggest that God made sin. But you know, he he knew it would, and he he allowed it to happen so that we could experience the greatness of God. And the Bible tells us that that God's ultimate purpose in everything is to have Christ head of everything, right? I mean, that's what the Bible says, that, that Jesus Christ, is the, the goal was for him to be the head over all creation. I mean, so that the Father would be glorified, right? Look what it says in Ephesians 1, 8 through 10. I have that on the screen. And it says, um, Which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight. He made known to us the mysteries of his will, according to his kind, intention 
which he proposed in him. With a view to administration suitable to the fullness of the times, that is, the summing up of all things in Christ, things in heaven, things on the earth, and in him. You know, so I think maybe it would be fully, it would be hard to define what God's glory really means. You know, the scripture tells us that in heaven right now, that the angels and, and the, and the uh, um, celestial creatures that God has created that's in heaven. You know, it's not just angels, but that's another subject. They're all worshiping God. They're all worshiping Him because why? Worthy of the worship. And, you know, um, through the creation of the world, we see that God, God's greatness and his power we see that and and through his judgment of sin what do we see we see justice we see holiness you know I think although that Jesus Christ was redeeming us on the cross has redeemed us on the cross we we see the father's love and we see the his grace and his mercy so here's the question why why didn't God just show his glory another way rather than the way he chose you know, remember, he didn't make Adam and Eve sin. He, um, it was Adam and Eve to, to chose on themselves to be disobedient. And I, know, I don't know about you, but because of this, what happened later? We know what happened later. We, we got to see and understand of all of God's holiness and in his justice and, his, and experience his love and grace. And what do, you, what, do you think God wants a relationship with you? That's why he created you? I mean, think about it. God, he really didn't have to create the world. He, or us, you know, he's self-sufficient. He's a complete God. He doesn't need the world to support him. I don't make him God. You don't make him God. He is just God, amen? He's not lonely, we know that, because in the Trinity, there's the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So he's not alone, yet he made man because he wanted to have a relationship with us. I mean, he could have stopped at creating the earth and the, and the heavens and the plants and, and the animals. But on the sixth day, he created man. And he said what? He said it was very good. He said it was very good. I mean, how is, we think about this. How is man different from creation? We were created in his likeness, in his image. The rest of creation was not. You know, so we, we have his attributes. We have the ability to, to be Christ-like. You know, we, we, that enables us to, to relate to him and to, uh, in a way that creation can't. You can have a relationship with God in a way that that tree outside that's probably four or 500 years old cannot. But obviously God created it, in my mind. You know, I think it's interesting that uh, God doesn't... Um, need to keep us, uh, uh, doesn't need us to keep him company. And, and you think about, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, it says that after he made man, God noted that it was very good. Everything else was good, but we were very good. So why did God create the world, even though he knew it was going to go bad, go south? Because he desired a relationship with man. He desired, he, he was ready to show us patience. He was ready to be loving. He was merciful uh, to all of mankind. You think about this, compare it to having a child, a couple who have a child. You know, they, they already have each other's company. They, there's, there's, they're not lonely. But the, the desire for this, this uh, uh, companionship of an, an additional family member just kind of encourages them. You know, even though they know that this child's going to grow up and be flawed, naughty, disobedient, he's going he's gonna to bring heartbreak and pain, but it's all worth it, amen? It's all worth it because they're gifts from God. And, and you know, they're, 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 they're perfect, aren't they? Aren't your children perfect? I know my mom thought I was perfect. She was here, you could ask her. <laughs> but, you know... Um, I believe that uh, he 
why God didn't uh, create human beings that, why didn't he create human beings that couldn't sin? You know, that we didn't have that, ab- that ability to sin, that we were just, uh, why did he give us a choice? You ever ask that question? I think it's because free will, that's how he is needed to show love. You know, you, you, same reason a, a, ch- a couple doesn't go out and buy a robot, they, they decide to have a child, because that child can love them back. The robot cannot, Right? You know, it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, a, a relationship is meaningful not only when it's a, a two-way, but either when it, both parties choose to stay in the relationship. And, you know, God says that he will never leave nor forsake you. He is in till the end. And I don't know where you are in your life, but, but God's not going to turn his back on you. Whatever struggle you're figure, facing, whatever addictions you might be plagued with, Whatever is going on in your life. And whenever you think, oh, God's not listening, you're wrong. That's Satan telling you God's not listening. Because God is always there. He is always there. He will not forsake you, the Bible tells us. You know, if that were the case, you know, if God just made us like robots, then then we couldn't choose to love him. You know, then love would be kind of forced. You know, it wouldn't be, it would be kind of controlled. Otherwise, like a, a forced slavery, a forced to, to be loyal. Think about, what about the prodigal son? Why was the father of that, you know, obviously well-known story of that parable, why was that father so happy to see the son return? Why was he so happy? And, and if you wanted to look it up, it's in Luke chapter 15. But, you know, it's because the son, he had, he, it was, on his own accord his son decided to repent and turn to the father on his own the father didn't have to force him or bribe him or give him say hey if you come home I'll give you more money if you don't come home I'm going to beat you forever you know one of those things no the, the, the son decided on his own to repent and that love of that repentance and that love is more valuable to the father than any of the money that he gave him amen now, I believe that uh, God wanted us to decide for ourselves if we wanted to love him back. You know, he wants us to do that. So, so he made us with this free will that everyone struggles with sometimes. And that's the ability to choose whether to follow the instructions or to not. Right? Just like it is in school for you teenagers. You have the choice to follow the instructions of the teacher or not. But there's always a result, right? If you don't follow the instructions of the teacher, you get bad grades. If you don't follow the instructions with the Lord, your life will be harder here on earth. He already says it's going to be tough, but I'm with you. Don't worry. But when you're walking around with no hope and you're just pure lonely all the time and you have no, no desire to, to, to look to a, a, creator, a, 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 a God that created you, I pray that you will turn to him. And you know, I think the answer to the questions that we ask today comes just down to this, trusting God. Just to, to trust in God's character. Trust in his uh, ability to do what he says. Look what it says in Gen- uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 29, verse 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to the sons forever that we may observe all the words of the law. You know, I believe that these three options that I shared with you today kind of uh, uh, give a perspective to uh, some measure of logic um, on, on understanding why God would proceed with creation despite knowing that it would all go wrong. You know, it's probably not lining up like a great mathematical uh, equation, but, but I think we can see that, that what God did was entirely consistent with his purpose and his character. In, in the case of creation, uh, it, it may come down to simply accepting that God's action comes from his attributes, comes from his purpose and his character, right? And because why? God is loving, he is, he is good, he is perfect, We all know that God created the world to be perfect, right? That was his original plan. He created us 
to be without sin. That was his original plan. And I bet we could, dis- we could spend uh, a lot of time discussing uh, reasons why uh, things didn't go, the, you know, didn't go the way they did. But I, I think that um, you know, God handled it in the end, right? He sent Son. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to pay for our sin. And, you know, I, talking about these uh, things, last week, Pastor Frank, he talked about how the world's a wreck. And it, it, it's all going, uh, in, you know, to hell in a handbasket kind of thing. But, you know, and, and unfortunate, it's not going to get better, unfortunately. But here's what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us because we know God's glory, love, and mercy, and grace... We have a relationship with him, and we understand that our free will allows us to love him more. And, and you know, we, we, can, we can be better in this world for the world. You know, I can be better for the world around me. And, you, you know, I always tell the kids each week that uh, God has given us all the tools that we need to, um, to share with the world around us, right? All, all the work. Uh, we need to do is right here in this Bible. Look what it says um, in John fourteen twenty seven. I didn't put it on the screen, but it says, "Peace I leave with you." In other words, maybe you're maybe you're depressed today. Maybe you're struggling with anxiety. There's a verse that can help you. Maybe maybe you're struggling with your identity, like a lot of people are today. They're not sure if they're a boy. They're not sure if they're a girl. They're not sure if they want to be a mouse or a cat. Or what I mean, I'm not, I'm not laughing. They're putting um, um, kitty boxes in schools, in the bathroom. You know, people are so confused about who they are. And you know, if we identify ourselves with the true living God, then there's no question of who I am. The identity crisis that we are set struggling with here in the United States is major, major, and you know it. Everybody is struggling with who they are. And, and see, when God said, when you trusted in Him, that you became a new creation, that the old, the old things were gone and you were new. It not, it's not like He took the old Preston and put a new paint job on it and put some new shoes and got some new clothes. No, it says, I am brand new. Like you go down to the dealership and you get a new car with three miles on it. Not a used car. You know, new. It's brand new. God created us new. And our identity is in Him. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us. Isaiah Isaiah 41.10 talks about how if we're struggling with loneliness or fear or isolation, we can go to that verse. There's all kind of verses in the Bible that will help you with your daily struggles. And I know people are struggling each and every day. How, how, to, how to instructions on defeating Satan. Ephesians, uh, what is it, 6? The armor of God. I mean, I, I always like that passage because it talks about a soldier ready for war. He's got his shield, his armory is on, he's got his sword, but he's preaching peace. Amen? That's our God. Put on the armor of God. Are you wearing it? So here's my challenge to you today, church, and I will be done. Um, appreciate, appreciate what God's done for you. Appreciate what God's done for you. Study His Word. Apply it to your life. Be prepared daily that you might be able to share something with someone else uh, uh, um, about who Christ is. You know, a lot of times we, we talk about sharing Bible verses, but all you got to do is share your love. Actions are a lot louder than words, amen? You can talk to them and tell them Bible verses until you're blue in the face, and that's great and and, and perfect. But unless you show someone you love them or you have mercy for them or you're being patient with them or you're you're praying for them because they feel lonely or you're praying for them because they have an identity problem, you can help them see who who they can identify with and what they're identifying with. Instead of worrying so much about the state of our lives here on earth, we need to share with others the joy that we're going to have in eternity. Amen? And what kind of joy is that? Standing before God, perfect, righteous, and holy. Let me pray. Father in heaven, thank you once again for your love and for 
your word that tells us everything that we need to know. And Lord God, we have crazy questions that wonder why you created all things even though you knew we were going to just mess it up. And Lord God, I believe the simple answer is is just because you love us. You want us to love you. And Lord, when we, we look to you for all our struggles and for all the things that are going on in our lives, you will answer. Your word tells us that you hear our prayers and that you will answer them. Lord, thank you for this day, for this opportunity. We pray in Christ's name.